show, 20 minutes of the second half gave you a real go, which is something to build on, I suppose. But uh, the last 10 in particular seemed to run out of steam very quickly. Yeah, we did. We, we ran out of replacements. Um, I made a triple change just after half time and then learned the news as soon as I made that triple change that Alex Foster had to come out, uh, come off the field because of a hip flexor injury. So I um, had to put someone that I just replaced back on for Alex Foster. And uh, losing Scott Moore um, in the first half to a, um, a knee injury um, prevented me from you know, bringing uh, young Joel Wicks off. And it was just a question of just how uh, we ran out of gas, particularly in those conditions today. We're really, really difficult. How do you deal with blokes like C.S. Oliola and Alex Walmsley? Yeah, they're fantastic footballers. And just, I think, Walmsley was playing championship a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, Masoy comes on and Soliola, it's just, they're, they're, they're why you pay the big dollars for them. Um, they lay, lay the foundation so well uh, for St Helens. And I, I was talking to Nathan Brown after the game and, their rugby league management today, uh, St Helens, that is, the way that Roby and the halves control the game, particularly in that first half where their kicks, um, they had nine kicks for eight high finishes and that's how you grind out teams. Um, their, their rugby league management today was, was superb and on the back of those um, two guys that you mentioned. Still got some points though, didn't you? Excuse me? Still got some points on the board though. Yeah, we did, we did. and. Um, Picking the side today, we had uh, four 19-year-olds, our, our uh, under-19s, narrowly were beaten today by St Helens, who are number one in the academy. And um, again, we're using uh, four and five 19 players each week. And for Joel Wicks to play uh, one half of football, the second half of football, and to do what he'd done in that second half of football against a quality team like that, um, John Wallace, and um, you know, in particular, Oscar Thomas, those type of guys. Our average age of that team out there today was 20 years and two months. So, you know, uh, without disrespecting St Helens, and I, I wouldn't know the answer, but I'd certainly feel that there'd be about a seven or eight year difference in shift. Um, so that's the level of experience that we're giving out, or giving up to other teams. But their advantage for that, um, I asked for a lot of enthusiasm, and I think that's what you were referring to in that first 20 minutes of the second half. I think um, uh, we were able to uh, have a bit of enthusiasm, and we got a couple of lucky breaks and forced the ball over, and we were able to capitalise. Uh, in particular, that Danny Solomona try was just a fantastic leap. So, yeah, a few positives to take out of that. What did you make of Oscar Thomas's game, considering he's just come straight back in and played? Just unbelievable. I was worried about the game. Um, the fellow hasn't played for the Broncos for 12 months. He, um, people may or may not be aware that he had a serious injury, ended up playing for London Irish. I offered him the opportunity to, to trial, just to train for free for um, four weeks, and he was just incredible at training. And I didn't really have another option and uh, threw him a bone, and he was fantastic today. He. Um, he was good with the ball. Defensively, he's got a bit of work to do, but we'll work on that. And he ended up playing the last 15 minutes in the halves. So he's a, he's a person with a, a huge potential. And I really like Oscar around, the, uh, around training. He's a good fella to have around. He's very popular with his peers. And um, the thing with him, he's got a lot of versatility and he's got a lot of X factor, which is one thing that we probably don't have too much of at the moment. How hard is it to keep the players' spirits up in the fourth quarter of the season and get a game like this? Lift every game, huh? Yeah, that's that's really a real good, real good question you ask because uh, one of the things that I spoke to the players, I congratulated them. The difference from this week and last week's game, there was a clear shift in effort today, opposed to when we played against Warrington. Similar score lines, like we were heavily beaten today, but the effort that our guys gave today was considerably greater than what it was last week. Um, so. Um, Sorry, I forgot your question again. I'm no, excuse me. How hard is it to get to the players? And the second part to that question was is that um, I said that we've got seven games to go. We've got a squad of 32 players, 21 of which are not going to be at the Broncos next year, whether it's through um, ascertaining other clubs in the Super League or being told by myself that they're not required next year. To motivate 21 players, given that they're not going to be here next year, is a challenge in itself. However. Um, I keep on laying the challenge to my staff to make training enjoyable and excitement and a place where they want to come to. And at this stage, the season that we're having, 
we're getting no absentees. So it's telling me that me and my staff are doing something right. We know where we are. We know where our future lies and what we're trying to do in the next 10, uh, 12 months. But um, I haven't had a real huge problem in trying to motivate and keep training as enjoyable and interesting. I think the players um, have given me that respect and, and courtesy, which is great. And We've got seven games to go, and as long as we can row in the same direction, it's going to be a, a pretty exciting seven, day, uh, seven games. I think it's fair to say we expected a lot of the top players to leave, top performers. But every week we're reading about more and more players leaving, getting super league contracts. Yep. How many players are you losing now that you would like to have kept in the championship? All six. Um, six, um, and uh, I can't go into the nuts and bolts of it, but um, I understand that there are six players that are leaving our club that have got contracts with other super league clubs, and um, some of those will be announced uh, later on uh, with joint. Um, uh, joint uh, media releases or whatever the case may be, but to answer your question, all six um, we wanted to keep at our club, but it's not going to happen because one of Sarri Cap and two players have got aspirations of playing Super League. You mentioned uh, I think that we're going to stay full-time next season. Yes, that's right, yep. Um, David has assured the club uh, and the players and my staff and myself included that um, where we're moving is uh, going to be full-time. So we've... Uh, um, um, signing up a squad of players which will be full time. Um, it won't be moderate, it won't be part time and full time, it'll be complete full time. We should give a, a big benefit against most of the teams in the championship are part time. So oh, I agree. I think that spending time together on the pitch um, and in the gym um, is going to add continuity. And one thing that the Broncos haven't had in the last 12 months, and, and Tony Smith was quite right when he said it last week that we haven't had an off season. So for us to have an off season and you know, for us to um, train together is going to be a, a, a massive, massive advantage, particularly at full time. And I guess that shows the seriousness of David Hughes, our owner, in, you know, a genuine um, team to get back into the top four and give uh, an opportunity to get back into Super League next year. You also, made, uh, how many players do you think you will have for pre-season this coming winter? 22. I have 22. And then there'll be room for three or four more signings. Yep, loan or, or whatever the case may be. So uh, we're pretty confident that um, we're, we're well on target now already. That's three times more than last December. Exactly, and exactly, which um, probably identifies uh, where we are. And Tony Smith was uh, right when he said that about that about us last week. Uh, how much of a balancing act are these next uh, six games going to be in terms of trying to win a game? so that you don't end the season without winning the game, but also giving as much game time to the players that are going to be here sort of next season at maybe the expense of the sort of more, more experienced players. Yeah, that, that is a balance. Um, like today, we had five uh, uh, we had five 19 year olds out there today. So given that they uh, can play, uh, they will be selected. Um, my my um, uh, thought process is 2015-2016, uh, where we're heading, but certainly I'll be doing everything in my power to win a game. Um, I wouldn't be resting players uh, the benefit of uh, blooding someone else. I wouldn't do that. And actual fact, it could have a negative, and, and, a negative effect on the younger player. Um, the Joey Keyses of the world, um, you know, he had a heavy defeat last week, a heavy defeat this week. He's a type of person that could handle that mentally. So it depends on the character of the person and the um, capability um, of that person as well. But there will be some players in the 19s that will debut this year. It's just a matter of uh, when and where.